All right, guys, we're going to be doing an intuitive reading. So take a moment to pick a deck that kind of just calls to you. It's just kind of speaking to you, whatever deck you are most drawn to. We have the we have the African American tarot deck. We've got a spicy erotic tarot deck. And then we've got the wild unknown tarot deck with which has beautiful imagery of animals. Spirit, please let your message come through for those who have chose the African American tarot deck. What is it that you need them to know? What is it that they must know? What divine message awaits those of the African American tarot deck? Please give them a message that they can use. If anyone is seeking guidance in a particular situation, please shed some light for them. Let them leave this reading more enlightened with a clearer path. Please, Spirit, what is it that you need them to know? What message awaits those who chose the African-American tarot deck. There is a bit of turmoil. There is some type of struggle between a masculine and feminine energy. For some, for some reason, this is feeling very motherly to me. There is definitely some type of familial struggle here. Um, I'm seeing a warrior standing on his own, right? He's standing on his own, but in the back of his mind, in his subconscious, there is something that is weakening him, right? So he has a weakness. He's strong on the outside, right? His physique is strong, his stature is tall, and he's kind of like standing in, um, you know, he, he's kind of like built this kind of like stage for himself, right, with all his success. But there's something in his psyche that still has a hold on him. So even though he's strong physically, mentally there's a lot of, um, there's a battle going on. And it's very it's making him very sick. It's not not physically sick, but you know, it's kind of like it's a weakness to him. So what use is, is all this strength if he has this weakness, right? So if somebody knew this weakness, that would be his Achilles heel, right? So he's very guarded because he can't let people know what he's really thinking, how he really feels. And here we have a young warrior, right? A young warrior slaying a monster. And it's, it, it's, it's out of protection. So the young boy is called to protect his family. But there is still a struggle within that family. So even though he's doing what one should applaud him for doing, right? He's, it doesn't seem like he's getting much recognition for, for what he does. It's almost as though 
yes, you did that. Yes, you accomplished that. But it was expected of you. So why should I thank you for that? This person wears a very tough skin. This person wears a very tough skin. And it's almost like they're guarded. Like they've been guarded for so long that they don't even know that they're guarding. They don't even know that they're still in warrior stance, you know, because they've been a warrior their whole life. That's literally how they were raised. It's how it's it's all they know. That was their lifestyle to be a warrior, to be ready to, to go on offense or to take the offensive. Spirit, please give us more context. I'm seeing a web. I'm seeing a king. I'm seeing that this person, they are very accomplished. They are very successful, right? They are kind of like, from the outside looking in, they are basking in their success. They work very hard for a very long time and they are reaping the rewards of that success. But I'm not getting the sense that it necessarily equates to happiness. I'm getting the sense here that there is a web, right? And so webs are very intricate. They look very flimsy. They look very, you know, um, breakable, but they're very, they're really not. Webs are very, very strong. And I'm seeing here that there are webs, ties, um, interweaved into this person that are very strong and hard to break. Please give us more context. Okay, so the message that I'm getting, what I feel like is just trying to come through, there is an inner child within um, those of the African American tarot deck. There is an inner child who wants to kind of like not be set free, but I think this is the time now you work so hard to accomplish so many things and you're so great at it but take the time now to be jovial right we're only getting older this is the time now to really do those things that you wanted to do as a kid that maybe your parents didn't let you do it's time to really connect with your inner child and kind of like feed that inner child make that inner child happy what is it that you really wanted to do as a kid not saying to go change careers, but if you wanted to be a dancer, take a dance class. If you wanted to be an artist, paint something. If you wanted to be a doctor, um, you know, like buy a, a daggone mi uh, microscope. Like what is it that you couldn't do as a kid, but you can do it now? You may not be able to, um, you know, completely just, you know what I'm saying? But what is it that you never got the chance to do and you've neglected neglected it your whole life? It's time to really now um, center yourself, connect with your inner child, and really find that thing that truly makes you happy. Not what everyone else taught you would make you happy, right? Because I'm seeing here that I don't even think that your successes are really your own. Like, I don't think that, um, yes, you worked hard for it, but I don't think it was the idea was yours to begin with. It seems like you basically were successful at doing what other people taught you you were supposed to do. So really now take the time to kind of like be successful at being happy. You know, show them around you what it looks like to be truly happy because I don't think the people around you are even happy, right? Because this type of thinking, this type of teaching really is um, is, is usually handed down, right? So that is how um their parents and their parents taught them how to um, survive, right? And how to interact in the world. 
So now this is your time to